Hello and welcome back to France. As we mentioned in part one, we're in the Bordeaux region for our very first river cruise. And what a way to begin this new chapter of cruising for visit with us, but here in the region that produces over 9,000 different wines on one of the finest river ships in the world. Uniworld's SS Bon Voyage. We are taking you around with us on Uniworld's brilliant Bordeaux itinerary and showing you not only this gorgeous landscape packed with chateaus, vineyards and ancient UNESCO World Heritage sites, but also what it's like to enjoy a week with one of the most awarded, luxurious and respected river cruise companies in the world. So, let's kick off part two. If you can can, please press that subscribe button and embark with us on a journey that is as fascinating as it is tasty. Yes, we drink lots of wine because that's what you do in Bordeaux. So once again, welcome. And as they say here in the UK, when we raise a glass, bottoms up. Waking up in Blay the next morning, as well as watching some amusing, bickering fisher folk, we could see the destination for part of our excursion that morning, the historic Blay Citadel, within a stone's throw from our balcony window. We were only in Blay until lunchtime, so we chose to join the excursion which included a coach ride of the Route de la Corniche Fleurie. We stopped along the pretty route at a viewpoint, where the largest estuary in Western Europe, the Gironde Estuary, split into two rivers, the Garonne and the Dordogne. Rather typically in this day and age, the view of the fork in the river was dominated by some sort of ugly oil terminal depot thing. Such a shame. Here's an aerial view of it. While we're here, let's address the burning question you never thought to ask, but when I ask it, you will not be able to not notice it. Why are both rivers so brown? Yes, both these rivers resemble a cross between chocolate milk and an overstewed cup of tea. Our French guides were eager to inform us that the river was not dirty, but silty. With the effect of the oceanic tides, the river comes up against an incoming current down the exceptionally wide Gironde estuary of seawater. Salt water is heavier than fresh water, resulting in a saltwater undercurrent which lifts the sediment above the salt water to the freshwater layer and it pins that sediment to the surface of the water. No, it's not pretty, but then there's not much you can do about the science of it, is there? Already we were pleasantly surprised at how relaxing the river cruising experience was turning out to be, having heard that it can be quite regimented with a tight schedule. However, it was nothing like that, with plenty of opportunity to independently explore the villages and towns we stopped at, and there were daytime sailings just to sit back, relax, and watch the wine world go by. In fact, one of the most pleasant things about a river cruise in Bordeaux, and quite unusual to river cruising as we have since found out, is the lack of traffic and other river cruise ships along the way. We saw very few during our week. We cruised the Dordogne in the afternoon, taking in the picturesque shoreline, the houses built into the rock faces, and the rather abundant amounts of shipwrecks. Until we'd reached Bourg sur Gironde, which was a beautiful little town to explore on foot directly from the ship. You can see the extent of the silt problem they have in this region quite clearly here. With an appetite solidly earned from our hilly walk, we were soon back on the ship for the captain's welcome cocktail party and a delicious French meal in the Grand Fromage. But the night wasn't over yet. The surprise entertainment for the evening couldn't have been more French if Gérard Depardieu and Brigitte Bardot had climbed aboard themselves singing La Vie en Rose before presenting you with a plate of escargot in brioche. Yes, it's a thing, keep watching the vlog. Something only the French could get away with. A can-can dancer. This is a French can, -can. Ah. 
Frilled and ostrich feathered up to the nines, high kicking, feather flapping and cheekily showing her derriere to everyone in the salon. Top tip, don't film this unless you want to be singled out for a private bum flash. Now, if that didn't put a smile on your face, you're on the wrong cruise. This is France, this is Uniworld, and it's about as French as you can possibly get. And we love it. Early the next morning, we slipped our lines in Borg and headed back toward Blay to dock on the other side of the river in a little place called Medoc, the gateway to numerous vineyards along the riverbank. Destined to reach Medoc by lunchtime, we again enjoyed a leisurely morning sailing along the river with a rather lovely oyster tasting event scheduled for late morning in the cute little cafe style venue Le Café du Soleil, located at the rear of the top deck, with the cafe style seating extending out onto the deck surrounding the aft facing the infinity pool. Another thing we loved about SS Bon Voyage was that it carries a number of bikes which guests can request to use to explore an area independently, as well as offering guided cycle tours. And that's what we were going to do. <laughs> but on this occasion I volunteered to be a human map for the guide to explain our route, and we embarked on a 15km ride through the local vineyards with a visit and wine tasting at Chateau Malascasse, a recently renovated modern chateau with a Premier Crew Classic rating. As you'll see in the next few minutes, some of these wineries are not short of a bob or two. The no expense spared facilities were stylistically sparse and had a surgical cleanliness which bordered somewhere between an Apple store and a Bond villain's uber cool lair. A Bond villain with a penchant for world domination and a good drop of wine of course. Equally as complex as this, well, complex is what a premier cru actually is. Cru is a wine term, used to indicate a high quality vineyard or group of vineyards. It is a French word which is traditionally translated as growth, but the meaning of the word cru varies slightly between wine regions. For example, cru has a different meaning in Burgundy than in Bordeaux. More precisely, it references a great or superior growing site or vineyard. Soil, climate, altitude, aspect and the right variety create a synergy recognised as a crew. In the Bordeaux wine official classification of 1855, Premier Crew or Premier Crew Class A is the highest level of five within the Grand Cru Class A designation for red wines from the Medoc region. As we shall see later in the voyage, saint Emilion has a slightly different classification than Medoc. Confused? Yeah, me too. Generally, Grand Cru is more superior in quality than Premier Cru, but if I was to generalise this rather convoluted term, overall they represent the best of all wines produced in a region. I shall now prepare to be shot down in flames by any wine expert watching this. Now where's that sofa to hide behind? During our well-earned dinner that evening we set sail back to Bordeaux where we were stopping overnight in order to leave early the next morning to catch the low tide that would take us under the Pont de Pierre stone bridge, which with its 17 low arches and 6 metre tidal range makes it one of the most challenging navigations of the voyage. Bah, you didn't hear a word of that, did you? Too busy looking at the food. Well, I know I was. Day 4, and although the captain invited all the guests up on deck to witness the 6am sailing under the bridge, he made the mistake of telling us that we would be returning back under it at a more convenient time of 4pm, so not surprisingly, not many people joined him for the first navigation. When I say not many, I mean just me. Our first port of call that day was a little village called Cadillac, 20 miles inland from Bordeaux along the Garonne River. We had decided to opt out of the excursions on offer that day, choosing instead to wander into Cadillac for a meander round the town stopping for a morning coffee in a local cafe. After lunch, we set sail for our longest journey yet, sailing all the way along the Garonne, then turning into the Dordogne to our furthest destination, Libourne. While we sail, let's discover some facts about this region. The Bordeaux region is the largest wine producing region in the world. 
six times larger than the Napa Valley in California, and three times more vineyards than the whole of New Zealand. Bordeaux has 287,000 acres of vineyards, 10,000 wine estates producing 960 million bottles of wine a year, and produces the most expensive wines in the world. Along the way we sailed back under the Pont de Pierre bridge, but this time around the captain, crew and I were joined by the most guests on the open deck, whilst the sweet butler performed a sabering ceremony as we passed under the bridge, something of a tradition on a Uniworld ship. We arrived into Le Bourne that evening, and we were there for two overnight, with the voyage highlight planned for the next day, a full day in the gorgeous saint -Emilion. Our day in saint began rather oddly. Before we could disembark for our day trip, the captain had to untether us from our berth to sit in the middle of the river while a muscarette passed us by. If, like me, you've never heard of a muscarette, it's a tidal bore which occurs on estuary rivers and in Bordeaux can create waves of up to two metres high. Kind of like a mini tsunami. If the ship was berthed at this time, it could cause extensive damage to either the ship or the deck, so the captain had to take us into the centre of the river to ride the wave. We waited with bated breath, and although we could see the wave approaching, the actual event was a little bit of an anticlimax, but nonetheless an interesting occurrence to witness. With the ship safely rebirthed, we set off on our excursion to Centimillion, where we had a guided tour around the underground church, catacombs and crypts, which we weren't allowed to film or take pictures. Hmm, probably to preserve the mystique, because I couldn't think of any other reasonable excuse followed by a tour and wine tasting at Chateau Soutard. This chateau was huge and like Chateau Malascasse, was obviously a license to print money. But did you know the ridiculously grandois chateau we see today in Bordeaux are a recent fashion? None of these sumptuous chateaux you see or visit in Bordeaux are historical buildings. The idea of a chateau as a wine building started in the 18th century, when the richer Bordelais wanted to indulge in some luxury and decadence to show off their wealth. Top producers saw it as a marketing opportunity, demonstrating opulence and luxury, and to make your wines desirable as lifestyle brands. Hence, they all began building fancy houses. It's ridiculous, especially in these particularly austere times, but you know what? They're absolutely priceless for tourism, and they are one of the reasons people flock to this region from all over the world. To be honest, it wouldn't be as appealing if it was just fields and corrugated steel agricultural buildings, would it? After the visit to Chateau Soutard, we had some free time in saint Emilion to explore the UNESCO World Heritage listed town with its 97 wine shops and tiny millstone streets. It's also an ideal place to get some lunch in one of the many restaurants, cafes and bistros, six of which are mentioned in the Michelin Guide, with this one here having two Michelin stars and a mouth-watering menu with an eye-watering price. We found a little cafe opposite in the square overlooking the town that definitely did not have a Michelin listing and enjoyed a glass of local wine with a delicious charcuterie board of cheese, meats and local pâté. Being in Le Bourne for two full days meant that the next day we were able to explore this lovely riverside town and the surrounding area, firstly on a cycling excursion, followed by a walk around the town and its local market. The cycling took us around the town and out towards another stretch of quiet river and a private chateau, which I'm still to this day not sure whether we were trespassing or not, but we grabbed a few pics anyway and fled the scene. The town was absolutely buzzing with its market and again, it was much larger than I had anticipated and very lively. The town is not traditionally a tourist destination in itself, being a gateway to saint Emilion, but this would be unfair to the town, as it's rather quaint and distinctly French, as well as worth a wander, or a bike, around. The riverfront itself is vibrant and well worth a stroll or bike along. The attractive stone bridge, constructed in 1822, is a great place to grab a picture of the ship in both day and night, and when we visited there was a colourful modern sculpture that stretched along the promenade, which looked a little confusing and weird. 
When the sun shone, it cast colours onto the floor, so with my thinking cap on, I raced in, grabbed my little drone and threw it up to reveal its secret. Cool, eh? Soon we were leaving Le Bourne and heading back to Bordeaux, our final destination of this brilliant voyage. During the cruise there was an art class held in the Café de Soleil, and although we didn't participate, we sneaked in and took some video of our fellow cruisers demonstrating their inner toulouse lautrec Although some of them were a bit more Matisse than Monet, shall we say. Dinner in the Grand Fromage was as magnificent as you would expect, coupled with, you guessed it, some delicious French grape juice served by Laura, the ship's head sommelier. Unfortunately, for a while, we were sat next to a rather large uninvited guest. This is river cruising and sometimes your view gets rather rudely disrupted. The entertainment tonight continued its eclectic nature and was a father and son guitar duo. And I for one, being a bit of a guitar nerd, loved it. That's been one of the highlights of this trip. The entertainment has been varied and super enjoyable. For a ship with so few guests, it's surpassed our expectations. Since the ship was docked right in the heart of Bordeaux, we decided to explore the city independently, starting with a long walk along the promenade to the Basilica, where there was a large local market taking place. We spent some time in the unusual Basilica, with its modern stained glass windows, before wandering back through the centre of this gorgeous town, stopping to admire the traditional limestone buildings with French balconies, the cafes and the bistros, the lovely artisan shops and the historic buildings. After lunch we headed out along the river in the other direction, to the Cité du Vin Wine Museum. At the museum we spent an hour wandering around the expeditions before heading up to floor 8, where we enjoyed a glass of cold Cremont wine whilst enjoying the elevated view over the city. For our final evening on board SS Bon Voyage, we had asked to eat in the Brasserie restaurant, located at the front of the ship, next to the Panorama Lounge. The Brasserie seats only a dozen guests, and offers a bistro-type dinner in a small French cafe-type setting with views out the front of the ship, perfect when docked in the heart of a city like Bordeaux. The dinner was delicious and it gave us the chance to eat with some newfound friends. Although we had come to the end of our wonderful week on SS Bon Voyage, they remained hospitable to the end, allowing us to stay on the ship until we needed to leave for the airport. Our transfer was arranged to pick us up at 11.30am, well, although we had to vacate our room at 8.30, we still had a few hours to enjoy the open decks and to watch Bordeaux waking up and preparing for a local Sunday market being set up along the promenade. We'd do this voyage again in a heartbeat, our first river cruise experience has us hooked. The city of Bordeaux has become our favourite French city, Hmm, sorry, not sorry, Paris. And the towns and villages completely surrounded by vineyards bursting with ripening fruit and peppered with the prettiest chateaus you've ever seen, are like something from a rose-tinted days gone. Pair that with an utterly beautiful ship, a super attentive crew and the most delicious food and wine that's among some of the best we've ever had on a ship, then you've got yourself an almost perfect package for the perfect week, especially if you're into your wines or just want to visit an area of France that wouldn't normally be on the average tourist to-do list. If you enjoyed this and made it to the end, much respect and love to you. Why not stay on for a bit longer and watch these? Thank you and au revoir.